Dr. Williams, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a fellow of the Institute for Classical Absolutely. Education. Looking forward to many good years ahead <laughs> as we continue our work. Uh, but your work at the Templeton Honors College includes a graduate program focused on teacher training for classical schools. So could you just give me a quick snapshot. What is this? What sure. does this look like? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at the Templeton Honors College, we've been doing classical education for 20 years with undergraduates. And we really saw this need for training at the graduate level for teachers in classical schools. Mm -hmm. And so we've taken a, an approach to teacher training where we really view teaching as a craft. And when you think about how does anyone learn a craft or become a master craftsman, if they're a musician, if they're an artist, if they're a writer, if they're a doctor, mm -hmm. what are the kind of things that they would want to know? You might think, well, they want to know some of the history of their craft, some of the, some of the great practitioners of their craft, some of the techniques of their craft, some of the enduring principles that get woven through every aspect of a, of a musician's uh, performances or how mm -hmm. an artist uh, paints or how a, a writer writes. And so we've taken that approach and said, what are those kinds of things for teaching and teaching in the classical tradition? And so the program tries to orient teachers to the classical tradition itself. These transcendentals, the true, the good, the beautiful. How, what are those? How has the tradition thought about those? And how do we bring those into our, our classroom? So there's a piece of that. Uh, there's obviously pieces just on classical pedagogy. I feel like that's something that we're all still discovering. What is classical pedagogy? How did they teach? Uh, how was that changed as it came down to us through, say, the medieval era and the Renaissance era? So we're also trying to train teachers in classical pedagogy. And then also trying to pick up some of the um, insights of contemporary uh, educators, contemporary research in, in neuroscience or in special needs or in human psychology and saying, what do we learn now from contemporary studies that helps us do this job of teaching uh, better than we have been. Yeah. And so it's trying to just think about all those things that a classical teacher needs to, ha needs to know and be able to do in order to be a master teacher and in order to be a leader in their school uh, in classical education. So you mentioned the contemporary moment right. and it seems as though the last five to ten years we've witnessed an explosion of interest in K-12 classical. Where do you think that's coming from? That's right. I think in part it's coming negatively from a frustration mm -hmm. with the kinds of education that uh, people see being offered in so many schools around around the country. And I think there's just there's a there's a sense in enough people that there's got to be more, that there must be more out there, and a dissatisfaction with the kind of st students possibly that are coming out of some of these schools. And then I think you just need a you just need a taste of classical education. You just need to see some student who's been classically educated or talk to a classical educator, or talk to one of these students who's excited about Dante or who understands math uh, inside out or who is excited about reading great texts and thinking about great ideas and great questions. Or, you know, when you see a high school student who cares about living well, cares about society, can talk about politics intelligently with an adult, then you see that and you want that. You want that for your own children, and so I think that's driven some of this growth too. Just seeing a few schools around the country um, offer that kind of education, yeah. just it, it's a very it's a very winsome product that yeah. I think you you I would want. Right. And I think for most of us, when we discovered classical education, we had to get over the fact that we didn't have it when we were kids, mm -hmm. and there's just a, a sadness and a frustration that it wasn't around uh, when we were being educated, right. and then a real desire to see children, my own children, move through that kind of educational process. So yeah. true, so yeah. true. Now you were educated, at least in part, at the graduate level on the other side of the pond. I was right? indeed. And yes, indeed. Uh, in England. That's right. How does the classical education model, or this form, look there as opposed to here in the American context? Just interested. Yeah, right. Um, so I was at the University of Oxford for five years, uh, both studying and then, and then teaching. And it's interesting, there, there, isn't much of a, there isn't much of a presence of K-12 classical school in the UK for various reasons. Now, at the University of Oxford, a lot of what we do would be considered classical education. Uh, a lot of great texts in, in, in my own field, uh, reading great books in one-on-one -on -one tutorial sessions and in small group. Uh, debate and dialogue about these kinds of things. Sure. And I think 
I learned a lot from being at Oxford about what formation looks like and what education could be like at a, at a, on a very kind of personal level between mm -hmm. teacher and student. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, this, this wonderful uh, renewal that we've seen in the U.S. has yet to be translated uh, across the pond at the K-12 level. Huh. And so there are some people who are working on it, and some of us who are here in the North American context are trying to help out as best we can, but we haven't seen the same kind of uh, explosion or growth there by any stretch mm. that we've seen here over the last 10, 15, 20 yeah. years.